Welcome back to the lab, folks. Fenici sent me in this uh, LC1020E high precision handheld LCR meter to have a look at. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Yeah, you, know, you can see some of the features here 2 point inch screen. It covers resistance, capacitance, inductance, and impedance. It goes up to 100 kilohertz test frequency. And I don't know what the balance means. It's just Chinese only, I guess. <laughs> um, well, let's have a look. Let's have a look in the box here. So let's take it out of its wrappings. Looks very nice. Here's the uh, film peel. There we go. The usual little quality control sticker here. I think all these are exactly the same. I should keep one around, compare it next time. But that's okay. And under here we have all the things that you need. So let's see what that is. So we have a, a set of test leads for two wire measurements. We have a charging cable. That looks like it came out of its... Yep. And we have a manual. We have a, a shorting jumper. And here it looks like we have some Kelvin leads here. That's exactly what we have. Okay, I have to get this out of here. I'm sure we're going to have to do a calibration on it before we get started. So, oh, that's nice. That's gold plated. These contacts on here are gold plated too. And the way these work is that you have a two sided board here, PC board. So that each side goes to a different side of the uh, clips here. The manual here, so it looks like Chinese and English is typical for Fernisi. And in here somewhere is going to be the specifications. So if I can go to that page. So here, I'll, I'll show you these. I'll leave, probably leave a link to the manual in the description below. But uh, if anybody who wants to have a closer look at these, they can go to the link. But here are the general parameters and the measurement accuracy. All right, I haven't, uh, I haven't done anything with this. I had I had known nothing about it. So this is going to be a very investigative little look at this meter. So let's have a look at these probes here. What kind are they? Okay, they're, they're not too bad. They're not terribly bad. These uh, feel about what you would, the kind of feel that you get on uh, fluke leads. Not the uh, really expensive silicone ones that you have to pay extra for, but the ones that they give you with the meter. And they do have ratings on them here, which is nice to see. 20 AWG, 2000 volts, 80 degrees C. So, okay, good. Now, my, um, my thing is, unless absolutely necessary, I wouldn't be tempted to do two wire measurements, but uh, that's up to the user. I guess if you've got something in a circuit board, it might be hard to get these in, they're big. So you would use the two wire method and give up a little bit of accuracy that way. There's the power switch on the front here. You've got a USB port on the side here. And also there's a little, uh, a little hole, I don't know if you can see that. That's probably the uh, reset right there. And other than that, there's no no other places to stick anything in other than the front. Nice tilting bail on it. It's actually pretty stable. And yes, you can press the buttons while it's on the bail. That's good. Now let's turn this thing on. Capacitance, inductance, impedance, and resistance. And that's because that's auto. I just zoom in to have a better look at it. Yeah, okay, so here we have the secondary parameters here. So D is uh, dissipation factor, Q is quality factor, phase angle, series resistance, and of course reactance. They're pretty standard. Then we've got a hold function. We have a speed function. So when it's on slow, you go up to medium is twice as fast. And fast is four times as fast. So on slow, you, you've got about one update a second. I think it's going to be a little bit more accurate at that speed. 
You can change the range, so from auto to 100 ohms, 1k ohms, 10k ohms, 100k ohms. I very rarely have to, on any of my meters, take it out of auto. We got frequency, we could change 10 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, 100 hertz, 120 hertz. 1 kilohertz is your standard frequency. And you got level, you got 0.1 volts, 0.3 volts, 0.6 volts. You can put a bias in, which is nice for doing electrolytic capacitors. 0.3 volts amplitude and 0.5 volts. So it's always on the positive side, never drops below zero. So that's all those things here. Now, I've noticed that you can get to these using these arrow keys as well. So you can go over to frequency, you can change frequency here. Just as easy as you can down here, the same with amplitude, bias, and range. If we long press this OK button, we should get into the main setting. Now the sorting, if you go in here, you can see that you can set your uh, different parameters here. So if you're measuring a 1 UF capacitor and you're plus or minus 5%, you set those parameters there for when you're doing your sorting or your binning of components. And down here you can set language, brightness, volume, off time. That's the auto off. I have it set for no off time. Uh, calibration, that's just do your open short calibration. Every time you change measurement method, whether using this socket here or using the two wire method or using your Kelvin leads for four wire measurement, you should do uh, open short calibration before you begin your measurements. And I'm going to do that right now for the socket because the first measurement we're going to do with this will be using the socket. So let's, uh, let's go in here. We're set up to do short, so let's do the short. Okay, it's finished the short. Then we take this out and then we'll do an open. All right, now we should be ready to do some measurements. Of course, uh, here we got the system information and a restore. So if you want to do a factory restore on it. All right, let's come back out here. And I want to put this into auto mode just to test that. So before we do that, um, here's the hold. So you've got a hold here, you can hold a measurement. It's not gonna change from that time. But if you long press hold here, you go into that sorting mode. They call it recording in the manual. The only recording it's doing is counting which ones don't meet the requirements and which ones do meet the requirements, and that's about it. So they don't mention any way of getting that in and out of it. We'll assume that we, we can't get that information in a file take it out of that mode okay I just got some random components here um, sometimes these meters in fact even my East tester in auto mode has uh, trouble figuring out these small little inductors so let's uh, let's stick this in here and see if it gets it right no it doesn't my East tester though brings it up as a resistor this is bringing it up as a, a small capacitor okay Let's try this. This is supposed to be a 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor. And so we'll pop that in there. Well, it gets it as a capacitor. And can we get ESR up here? Yeah, that's pretty low ESR right there. Okay, uh, here's a smaller capacitor. Not much smaller, but it's a... Uh, a much higher ESR. So let's see what it makes of this one here. All right, this is marked as 100 UF. It's coming up at 90.6 and 0.4 ohms. And what else do we have? We have some resistors here. Let's see if it can tell that this is a resistor. Yes, it can. And it's a 100 ohm resistor, and it's coming up to 99.65. Okay. And this one here, I think, is a 3.3 meg ohms. And that's what it comes up as. Okay, very good. So what I want to do now is I want to uh, I want to just check some calibrated components. But I want to check them with the Kelvin leads here because for my use anyway, this is the way I'm going to use it most. So I'll have to put these in and do the, the short and open calibration. So we have kind of... 
second. Okay, good. okay we're all done. So let's now have a look at these. So this is supposed to be a, a very low ESR capacitor. And it is supposed to be 102.05 microfarads. I don't think that has the resolution to get there. And that's at 1 kilohertz. And the ESR was measured at 0 0.0074 ohms. Now we're going to put on the bias here. And we're going to put it into capacitor mode. And let's get the ESR up here. Okay. So, yes, so 102.05 versus 102.5. Uh, when I go to edit it, I'll do the calculation on that to see if this is within specifications or not. Now, these are transfer standards here. There, so I just transfer the reading that I got off of something that I trust. It, it also has a tolerance, so you've got to keep that into account too. Now, uh, let's bring up the frequency that uh, series resistance is it's okay, it matches the other series resistance fairly well, 0 0.0074 versus 0 0.0084 here. Okay, let's try another capacitor. Now this one I measured at 1.006 nanofarads. Looks like our ESR is bouncing around all over the place. Let's see if, if changing the range might help. It seems to be just a little bit unstable, especially on the series resistance for the smaller capacitors. Let's move on. Now what we've got here is a 994 microhenry coil, or 0.994 millihenry. That's the way I measured it before. And we've got to go now over to L. This seemed to be out a little bit. I'm just wondering if this has something to do with the Kelvin leads. Let's bring the amplitude up a little bit here. That help. Let's check the ESR. So the ESR I read on it before was uh, yeah 14.8 ohms. So it's, it's pretty good in the ESR, but it's a little bit low on the inductance reading. Let's try this other one here. This one's only 9.7 microhenry, and it was 0.49 ohms so okay yeah it's got this one better so it seems to have a little bit of stability problems with the smaller capacitors and with the larger inductors oh, that's uh, something I hope that they fix in the firmware yeah we'll try some good old resistors here so we'll put this in resistance mode now this here is supposed to be 1.012 mega ohms That's pretty good. And let's try this one here. This one's supposed to be 9.945 ohms. And uh, yeah, we're pretty good there too. So not much of an issue. Now I wanted to show you that binning mode or that recording mode. So I've got set up for one kilo ohm resistor and it's at 5% and this is a one kilo ohm resistor that is a five percent resistor so let's see how it, it this does this come in as a pass or a fail in this mode it passed so we got one passing let's see what if what happens if we put in this resistor here which is definitely not one k ohm I wonder how it determines whether or not it's uh, it's going to count it, because it came up with that before I even put a device on it. Okay, so it's, it's come up three in green. Shouldn't the only the passes go into green, and the fails should go into the red? So what I did is I recalibrated it for the internal socket, uh, which is what the manual says the specifications are based on. So I just want to go back and try out those two items that we had a little bit of trouble with. One is this uh, small capacitor here. So let's get it in capacitance mode. 
and we want ESR because that was the problem in this mode, this capacitor. It does indeed go into the socket here quite nicely. The capacitance is a tad better than what it was before, but the ESR is still going all over the place. So for Nisi, that's definitely something that you need to look at. This is a one nanofarad capacitor and it shouldn't be bouncing around like that as far as the ESR is concerned. Now, okay, let's, uh, let's look at that inductor that we had and we'll put up the ESR because that's what we looked at the last time as well. And here we go. Now this one was the value of the inductance was off. Okay, well it has improved dramatically. It's got about halfway to where it should be uh, from where it was. So yeah, yeah, it is more accurate in here, but still uh, it's another thing you need to look at for NEC is uh, in inductance is around about this size. It's not in spec. So that's maybe something that needs to be looked at in a firmware upgrade. All right, so let's, uh, let's sum up here. What do I think of uh, this device? Well, I think it's, I think it's pretty good. I, th I think for an issue you need to address a couple of little things, but I will say that the user interface is very nice. It's easy to get around, it's intuitive. Working this meter is, is pretty nice. But other than that, it's a nice size. It fits in the hand real easy. And it provides a lot more information than, uh, let's say, devices like these ones here. Now, uh, it's a lot more accurate than this one as well. It's, uh, this one's pretty accurate, but it doesn't provide as much information as this. So while these are great for what they are, like this is especially great for, for testing stuff in circuit and SMD stuff, but it doesn't quite give you the same versatility that this gives you. This is a step up in that direction. Now it should be, it's about twice the price of these. I like the fact that it comes with the Kelvin probes. I like the fact that it comes with the two wire option. And I like the fact that it is a purpose built instrument. It doesn't do 15 different things. Uh, it just does the one thing. All right, folks, I hope you got something out of this. I appreciate you coming out to watch the video and thanks for Nisi for sending this out to have a look at. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.